Welcome to this instructional video on Behaviorally Anchored Rating Scales, or BARS. In this video, our purpose is to summarize the background, development, and application of BARS as a tool for assessment of decision-making performance. This research and development is sponsored by the Office of Naval Research and is being used to support the Marine Corps' transformation of training and education, improving the way Marines learn throughout their careers. Why would we use BARS and what is the advantage? Whereas TNR manual events measure actions or behavior, we want to be able to assess a person's cognitive skill, how they interpret what's going on in the situation, think about what they want to achieve, weigh risk and opportunity, and come up with a decision. But much of that process happens between the ears and can't be directly observed. We see the decision they make, but not the thought process to get there. BARs associate behaviors you can see with levels of cognitive skill so that you can translate what is observed to the maturity of the individual's thought process. In addition, subject matter experts are prone to bias and subjectivity when they evaluate performance. All observers and evaluators come to the table with their own internal standard for what constitutes good versus poor performance. It can be difficult to get raters to use a scale in the same way without making that scale very well defined. BARS include specific descriptors for every point on the scale, which makes ratings more objective than any other type of rating scale, with activities to calibrate the raters. Agreement among raters using BARS is generally very high. Finally, the goal of all training and education is to rapidly and efficiently move individuals along the stages of development. In other words, training and education seeks to increase the learner's knowledge and know-how. The bars are based on a scientific model of how people acquire knowledge and know-how. The bars allows us to pinpoint or diagnose a person's current stage of skill development so that we know where they stand currently and can modify instruction accordingly. Bars also make explicit how a person performs when they are at the next level up, thereby providing performance targets that support learning and development. Bars are based on a five-stage model of cognitive skill acquisition. It was originally described by Dreyfus and Dreyfus as they studied Air Force fighter pilots in the 1980s. Since then, this progression of development through five distinct stages has been found by other researchers studying numerous other domains critical care nurses who have to spot early signs of trouble for their patients, chess players who have to spot patterns in the game pieces, psychotherapists, teachers, tactical thinkers, and other domains as well. In all these complex domains where decisions have to be made under time pressure and with uncertainty, people progress through these five developmental stages in order to become experts. The stages have their own clear hallmark characteristics that differentiate them from other stages. And there are no shortcuts. A person can't leap over a stage. The implication for learning and development is, we need to be able to diagnose a person's current stage of development in order to target their instruction and experiences to get them to the next level up. The bars use a five point scale that mirrors the five stages. So as you watch them perform, you can identify their stage of development. Each stage of development has distinctive characteristics, regardless of the domain or job the person is performing. One might think of these as behavior indicators or norms of development in any domain. To further understand this concept, let's look at the framework depicted in this chart. First, refer to the right side of this table, how knowledge is treated. Novices are equipped with book knowledge, but they haven't yet experienced how to apply that to a mission or real-world task. They don't know how to take that book knowledge and apply it differently in different contexts. They don't yet understand that what you do and how you do it should depend on situational factors. Once an individual gets to stage two, advanced beginner, they understand that how they apply rules and procedures depends on the context. Recognition of relevance. Novices and advanced beginners have a hard time distinguishing information and aspects of the situation that are most relevant or most important. To them, everything is of equal importance, which means, especially for advanced beginners, you see them often get overwhelmed because they are trying to pay attention to everything. 
Once an individual hits stage three, competent, they can identify what is relevant and prioritize their attention towards the most pressing tasks. Next, how context is assessed. Up through stage three competent performers, you'll see individuals be very analytical about their assessments of what's going on in the situation. Situational awareness development is very deliberate, very analysis heavy. Once a person becomes a stage four proficient performer, you see them holistically or automatically recognize patterns in the situation that allow them to know what's happening. They rapidly gain and maintain situational awareness because they recognize indicators and patterns in the situation that hold immediate meaning for them. Finally, decision-making. Up through stage four proficient performers, people have to rationally think through what is the best decision to make given the situation. When people become experts though, They become more recognitional in their decision-making, which means they do not have to deliberate whether COA-1 or COA-2 is more advantageous. They automatically know because they can mentally simulate how the COAs will play out. Now, refer back to the left side of the table, which includes some of the hallmark characteristics of each stage. Stage one, novice. Novices have limited or no experience in situations characteristic of their domain. Novice does not refer to rank beginner. Novices may have substantial textbook or classroom knowledge, but their lack of lived experience results in their understanding of the domain largely based on rules or procedures which they adhere to rigidly. Therefore, performance is limited to the application of those rules and they can't perceive what's happening in the situation nor apply any judgment about how to proceed. More often than not, They are unsuccessful in realistic situational circumstances. Stage 2, Advanced Beginner Once individuals move to Stage 2, they have enough experience to demonstrate marginally acceptable performance. They can recognize reoccurring elements of situations because they have experiences to use as comparison cases. For example, there's an enemy UAS flying around my mobile C2 node. That means They're trying to pinpoint my location. Further, their experience base gives them a set of guidelines to use when those recognizable attributes of situations occur. If they're pinpointing my location with the UAS, I'd better move. However, advanced beginners are limited by their inability to perceive patterns in the environment and have a tendency to prematurely jump to action. They also become easily overwhelmed because they cannot prioritize they see every task as equally critical. You see individuals at stage two understanding all the things they don't know, so they will often reach out to more experienced people for assistance. Stage three, competent. These performers are characterized by their deliberate, analytic, and intentional performance. They have acquired enough experience to assess and understand what's most important in the situation. They are skilled at formulating plans that address the mission or task goals. They are also able to manage large sets of incoming information due in part to their understanding of priorities. However, because they are so reliant on structured and formulaic analysis, they tend to wed themselves to plans and fail to adjust when the situation changes. Their highly analytical problem-solving approach is in contrast to the agile and flexible approach seen by more advanced performers. Stage four, proficient. Once individuals reach stage four of development, they become less formulaic and analytical in their approach. They perceive patterns in situations and assess them as a whole instead of the component parts. They are very flexible in their ability to spot highest priorities and understand that as the situation evolves, priorities might rapidly shift as well. They can set expectations about what is supposed to happen next, and if that doesn't happen, they know that the situation is not as they hypothesized. Proficient performers are able to recognize when the situation has changed and the plan no longer holds up. Performance is characterized by this automatic and dynamic situational assessment ability enabled by an extensive base of experience from which to draw comparisons. However, when it comes to making decisions based on recognition of situational changes, proficient performers still require detached analysis and deliberation to reach an acceptable course of action. Stage five, expert. 
Stage five of development is characterized by fluid, adaptable, recognitional performance in both situational assessment and decision making. The expert focuses attention on only the critical elements of the situation, recognizes changes with immediacy, flexibly applies knowledge and experience even to novel problems, and implicitly knows what course of action will remedy the situation, rapidly mentally simulating how to implement the course of action successfully. They anticipate leverage points and problems before anyone else, so they are able to exploit situations or avoid problems while maintaining momentum, seamlessly and efficiently. You'll often see them use assets or capabilities in non-traditional manners, for a purpose other than what they were designed, because they have a deep understanding of the systems and their affordances, which opens up creative, innovative ideas for their use. Experts manage uncertainty with ease. The five-stage model describes how people develop as they move from novice to expert. This gives us a lens through which we can view the progression of development for any occupational field in the Marine Corps. Each occupational field or domain has its own unique job requirements. Using the five stages of development as a foundational model for domain or job analysis results in finding and describing those unique job requirements, which we call a mastery model. To date, mastery models have been developed for Marine squad leaders, instructors, all source intelligence analysts, and information maneuver analysts. A mastery model is a customized five-stage model for a specific job, MOS, or occupational field, which provides domain-specific descriptions of the path to mastery. The mastery modeling process involves interviews with subject matter experts to capture the real know-how that resides with marine experts. In the mastery model, key performance areas, or KPAs, define what a marine must do to be effective at the job. All KPAs have their own definitions and subcategories of performance. Descriptive performance profiles summarizing how people perform on each KPA at each stage of development to show how they progressively improve knowledge and know-how, and performance indicators for each KPA that are examples of how an individual performs and the behaviors you would see for individuals doing the job at each of the different stages of development. The customized stage profiles from a mastery model form the basis of a BARS rubric. The visual here is of a paper version of a BARS. Every BARS consists of the KPA and its definition, a title for each item that is concise and descriptive to help the observer find the topic they want to rate during their observation, behavioral anchors or word descriptors of observable behaviors to be matched to observed performance, and comment boxes to record qualifying details to support the assessor's choice of marking where the student is currently positioned within the stages of development. When you rate an item, treat it like a fit rep. Start reading at stage one and move your way to the right to find the one rating that best matches what you observed. Once you get to a descriptor that a person or group is no longer doing, back up to the previous descriptor, which would be the highest level of performance they are doing. Make that your rating. If performance is between two levels, use half point ratings. For example, if an individual is doing some three and some four level behaviors, rate them as a 3.5. You are looking for the best match of what you see and what is described in the bars. Also, use what you know about the five stages in general to influence how you rate an individual. If the individual did not do the behavior because it was not relevant to the exercise, leave the item blank. If the individual should have done the behavior but did not, or you believe the individual did even less than a one behavior, rate him or her a zero or 0 0.5. This is an example of a paper bar summary score sheet showing each KPA and individual item you rated. Once you have rated performance across all items with each KPA, average the ratings within each KPA to calculate a KPA score, and average all KPA scores to generate an overall score. This identifies the performer's current stage of development in each KPA. The paper version of the bars can become unwieldy 
and difficult to sort through to find the item one's looking for, especially in the field. When feasible, we build the bars into software applications to make ratings easier. You may be using bars in the Imitate software, in the Field Assessment System, or FAS, or using the Turf tool. In the software, you can see all the KPAs and items and quickly and easily move between them. You can, and should, rate the same items as many times as it is seen. For example, performers can display one level of performance in one event, but a different level of performance in another event, depending on their level of experience with different event types, the people they're working with, or their level of fatigue. Another advantage of the software is the ability to explore all your ratings and comments after the session. There is no need to go back to your desk and manually enter the ratings into Excel or another program. Finally, when you are using any of these applications, it will calculate KPA scores for you instead of you having to manually add and average the ratings. When you implement the bars, be aware of the scale and how it may differ from other Marine Corps rating scales. Even though all Marines may expect to earn a 5, only the top 10% of all Marines are likely to achieve level 5 performance. We recommend that you calibrate observers in advance of activities or events. You can do this by selecting a comparable performance event to rate, having all observers independently rate performance, and then comparing ratings to discuss and resolve inconsistencies of more than one point. Familiarize with the bar's content in advance of the assessment to minimize need to read the scale anchors during your evaluation. Some raters find it difficult to fill out the bars while simultaneously watching students conduct the event, especially when they are new to using the bars rubric. If that is the case, we suggest you document your notes in the comment boxes or a separate notebook during student performance. Then, refer to your notes to rate the student after their performance is complete. We are always open to your comments, questions, and suggestions. For questions about the Office of Naval Research Programs, please contact the program officer, Dr. Peter Squire. For questions related to the bars, please contact Mark Fuller at Cognitive Performance Group.